So your motorcycle build is complete and you got all of the power and all of the goodies with it. Now you're gonna run into some high horsepower problems. And I'm gonna share with you my top four high horsepower problems once your motorcycle build is complete. And before I do, let's roll the intro. Let me know what y'all think of the intro because it just took me a lot of effort to get it done, especially for somebody that's self-taught. The first high performance problem you're gonna run into is that your motorcycle is going to be a lot more dangerous because of the extra horsepower and the extra torque that you added. Now, I won't say necessarily just because of that, because the other factor into that is you as a motorcyclist, right? You're gonna have to learn how to handle the new power that you have to the wheel that you didn't have when you dropped off your motorcycle at the shop. So inherently these motorcycles are dangerous by themselves. So when you add more power and you have a learning curve to go up with that, it's gonna be dangerous, y'all. So you're gonna quickly find out that you're going to have to respect the power that uh, you have. You're gonna have to respect the, the throttle and you're gonna have to respect that clutch and of course your brakes because depending on the curves and, and how your motorcycle handles, you're just gonna have to be a lot more careful. Now, once you get up to par with the performance level of your motorcycle, then that danger kind of comes down. But in my case, guys, personally, I'm still learning how to ride this motorcycle and I've had it going on a couple of years uh, with this setup. To an average of 200 horsepower and torque to the wheel, it's a lot to handle, it's a lot to handle, right? Now that leads me to my second high horsepower problem that you're gonna run into and that is going to be traction, y'all. Traction, yes, traction. Probably one of the most simplest things on your motorcycle, but one of the toughest things to line up depending on the power you have. And again, I don't care if you have 100 wheel horsepower or 200 plus wheel horsepower and torque, right? So for example, you know, these, this is my experience with this. When I have this bad boy tuned to around, uh, I don't know, 200 uh, torque and 200 horsepower, I can get off the line, but I'm burning all the way through first and probably all the way through second until third gear I'm gripping. Here I am in a position where I have all of this power, but I just can't get it down to the ground. And that is so frustrating. So in some of my videos that I have on Instagram and on YouTube, you can hear where this engine, it's going, it's, it's, it's spooling up, the turbo spooling up, and you hear it, you know, you hear me hit it, hitting the rev limiter so fast because the tire is just breaking loose right away, right? So it'll sound something like this, like and then it goes when it grips, right? But that almost defeats the purpose of having a lot of horsepower. Now granted, I didn't have the best tires on there and I had it at full, you know, what, the 42 PSI. What I know now is that you have to drop the PSI and also you have to have better stickier tires, right? Those uh, tires that I had at the time at the example I'm telling you about were the uh, Dunlop American Elite. Great tires, they lasted me, I don't know, by eight, 10,000 miles, but that's at how I like to ride, right? On here, I have the Schenkel 999s right now. I'm still trying them out. I haven't really opened it up, but so far I like them. They feel a little bit grippier, but honestly, I might have to get a smaller wheel to a 17 inch so I can get into those uh, sport bike tire options, right? Because I'm just breaking traction on here. So if I was like a drift guy, if I was drifting this, this is perfect. So I don't know, I might try that later on, but I, my skill set is not there. If you're a touring guy, like I am, then you want a touring tire. If you're a, a race going fast guy, like I am, well then you want a race tire. 
But when you want both is when you come into the dilemma that I have, which tire is going to fit both needs. And I'm still trying to figure that out. So if you have any suggestions for me, please let me know in the comments. The third high horsepower problem you're going to run into is setting up your suspension just right for the type of riding that you're going to have. Because let's be honest, once you have a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque, now you're like in a hybrid spot. You can go cruising or you can, you know, go really fast, right? So depending if you're going to go, for example, when I go to Sturgis, to uh, Arizona, to Florida, to Miami or wherever I'm going, I soften up my suspension, right? With the reserves down, uh, reservoirs down here. Whenever I know I'm gonna be like be a lot more active or around town that I'm gonna know I'm just gonna be burning through the lights or just getting on the highway and going, what I do is I stiffen my rear suspension up a little bit. I drop a little bit of the of the PSI on my tires and, uh, and I ride like that, right? But this is across town, in town, obviously I have my air pump because I wanna put more air. And so I design it for that. I modify the suspension and the PSI on my tire so that way I can get up and go whenever I want, right? Now, when I go out of town, as I mentioned, I make sure my uh, PSIs are where they should be for the tire, which is 42 PSI. And I uh, soften up my suspension and then I just cruise, put my backrest on and I can go on for miles. As you, you have seen on my channel, this is the only turbo uh, Harley Davidson that has ever done, I wanna say six 1,000 mile status floor challenges in less than 24 hours to include one uh, 1600 mile uh, iron butt challenge that we got the gold status for because uh, Reese and uh, Grayson and I uh, finished it in 23 hours and I want to say 38 minutes but we, I have the video on that as well so make sure you go to the channel and check that out. The fourth high horsepower problem that you're going to run into is the additional cost of maintenance. Now what do I mean by that? Well for one you're gonna burn through more tires, maybe uh, twice as much or three times as much, depending how you're riding. Also, something simple like your oil changes, right? In my case, I change my engine oil every two to 3,000 miles on both this motorcycle and my CVO uh, hot rod bagger that I have. So every two to 3,000 miles, I change the oil. Right now, what oil do I use? I use Moltool. It's a little bit more expensive than the rest, not that the rest, uh, that there's any bad recommendation, use any oil that you want, but that's the oil that I have uh, was recommended to me to use. And I've used it since I've had my first turbo on this motorcycle. And I'm happy that I've used it. This engine here has, I don't know, 25, 26,000 miles as it came from Trans, the engine itself. And honestly, I haven't even replaced the tap it's it. I don't hear no knocking, but I'll probably replace them here a lot sooner than later, just so I don't, you know, get my engine uh, in a position where it's not gonna work anymore, right? Another additional cost is going to come in when you convert over to a chain drive kit. And both of my Rogue Lights have a chain drive kit and I absolutely love them. But there's a little bit of uh, maintenance uh, fees or costs that comes with that. Uh, it's it's a minimal, but it's gonna be when you buy the, the degreaser or the lube for your chain to keep it running right and without messing up your, uh, your front or rear sprocket, you're gonna have to uh, just make it a point to uh, uh, degrease and lube your, um, your chain as much as possible because you don't want the premature wear and tear of your uh, front sprocket and your rear sprocket. In that case, I lube my chain probably an average of every 2,000 miles. So, and I think that's what what um, what they recommend. Also, you know, since I'm talking about the chain, the chains that I use are the EKG chains, and I like them. I like them a lot. Those are the four high horsepower problems you're probably going to run into once you have your motorcycle built, however it is that you wanted it to be built. Um, there's other items that I'll probably cover throughout other videos, but I felt it was very important to let you all know uh, or start thinking about these items that you're probably going to run into before you start uh, getting your performance build going on or even you know if you already have your performance build completed you're like you know what that's true i'll run into that and the last thing i want to do is i want to thank uh breezy baggers for giving me the idea for this video so breezy baggers if you're watching this thank you very much until the next video y'all be good and please don't forget to like share and subscribe